out here uh, talked to the guy at Mobility Express yesterday VA will uh, will get me new batteries he said the batteries he said I probably got a dead cell in one of the batteries and uh, I got to call the VA, and they they will um, send a request for him to service the thing, and he'll come out and do it. Well, what do we have here? Nothing. Well, yeah, it's all crushed. too far today. Um, oh, well, I'll do what I can do. Uh, nothing. And here's that Illegal. Can from uh, City of Ocala. Each one of these numbers is assigned to a, a street address. That's how they know where the cans are at. So this one it's surely not signed to this address because we're not in the city limits. But it is what it is. Who knows how they got that. They might have found it in darn wood or something. What we got here? Hey, here's another illegal. What the heck? What's going on with this? Yeah, see, the city of Ocala. Right there on the side. Hmm. She was recording. That's a dang um, flat screen TV. You know what? I'm going to have to see if I can. I 
I'm pretty close to the house. So. So, I'll take this thing to the house right quick. hope my daughter ain't awake to see me bringing this thing in. Ah, uh, this means I gotta get busy on my darn stripping these uh, flat screen TVs because I think this makes about six that I've got. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it pains me every time I see some of these people I'm sub to and then and then and then and then and then and yeah, that's six cent. No, that's about, let's see, one and a half, one and a half, that's three, four, almost five cents. Almost five cents. Almost five cents. Nothing. Nothing. Well, shoot. This is my place where I always get the beer cans. They ain't got nothing sitting out there. There it sits over there, but uh... Huh. Kiss my patootie. Nothing. Nothing. I wonder. Well, there it goes, blinking down. Oh, gun! I ain't gonna be able to go nowhere. Dad, you it? Yep, see it? There it goes, dropping. I'm done. Just drop the notch. So much for my trash picking days today. Son of a gun.
Yeah, I've got I've got to call the VA and get that request sent. piece he does about Sunday morning or Friday morning in the man shed. Well, <laughs> I guess this is my man shed. He said your man shed's anywhere you got a little spot. It's just you. Uh, I, you know, I just put no mosquitoes. Skeeters is getting bad out here. They wouldn't mess with a tough old geezer like me. But maybe I'm tender. Yeah, maybe I'm tender. <laughs> Anyhow, fixing to take some stuff apart. I went on my run this morning, this Tuesday. And uh, the... Um, the scooter, the battery started going down quick. Well, they're going to replace the batteries for me and service it. I just got to go call the VA and get them to send them a request to do it. They will do it. Plus, he said my scooter is still under warranty. Because I ain't had it. I just got it in January. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> I, you know, when you don't have a lot of subscribers and if somebody unsubscribes to you, they subscribe to you and unsubscribes, I notice it right away. Like, I knew that I was at 575 subscribers yesterday well this morning I'm at 574 so I know I lost a subscriber and I was wondering if somebody subscribed to you and it don't cost them nothing you know that matter of fact they don't even have to look at the channel but why would they just at the drop of a hat unsubscribe? Uh, I guess when you got thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers, uh, you don't notice them little fluctuations. So I was just wondering why, why, why did they, what makes them do that? And I wish that when somebody gives me a thumbs down or uh, uh, unlikes a video or something, and I've, I've only got this one, well, I've got several videos. Seems like every other video, somebody goes in there and hits the thumbs down. Uh, I can't recall ever having more than two dislikes at once. But I'm just wondering if this is the same person or well, I wish if somebody was gonna dislike a video, something in my video, it would be so nice 
if they would like to say, hey, I'm going to dislike this video for blah, 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 you know, for whatever reason. And that way I would know I could, you know, ascertain what, what it is that I was doing wrong or if I was doing anything wrong. Oh, uh, I it just, I don't guess nobody say, hey, I'm going to give you this line, but it'd be nice if they do it. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be happy, but I wouldn't be ticked off, you know, and raging mad or anything like that. I would just like to know. So if you're going to dislike a video, tell me why. Uh, and it don't have to be a, you know, it, it, it's, it is what it is. I wouldn't get mad. I wouldn't be, get happy. Uh, but I would like to know what it is that caused you to do that. But, and I was thinking too about something I would like to do. I would love to talk to my viewers, my people that sub me and view my video I would love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one while I don't have a lot of stuff you know in other words if you're on Facebook uh, let me know I'll send you send me a friend request or whatever my I'm on there it's Russell Pearson and uh, and then when you know you got that video chat you can do, I can ring you up, you can ring me up, and we can have a face-to-face -face conversation, a chat. Uh, I would love, I, I just love talking to people, guys. I, you know, it's just, I don't know why I do. It doesn't, it, there's no, it, there's no money in it or you know it's it's just I love to talk to people and uh but if you go to my channel or my Facebook page and just send me a friend request and uh and let me know on on YouTube that you did and one evening when I'm just sitting around, I'll ring you up and we'll just talk. I, I just feel like I can get to know people more and understand them more than I can when it's just texting back and forth on the channel. Uh, but I, I, I'd like to do I think it'd really be cool, you know. And I've got two or three. I'm... Uh, uh, I've got y'all on Facebook, and you and you can be expecting me to ring you up on that video chat. And I'm talking about Crazy Family Tube, and but I don't think they got a Facebook page, if I'm not mistaken. But I would love to talk to them face to face. Uh, I want to talk to Cat. Cat, you know who I'm talking about. I can't recall the rest of your name, and and uh, I'd like to talk to Marty on Scrap Life 24/7 or Scrap Kingdom face to face, but he doesn't have a computer, and I don't know that he can do that on his phone. I don't know. Uh, I. I'm not saying Marty's a peculiar guy, but I'm saying for me he's peculiar because of the ways he does things, and I don't mean it in a derogatory way or anything. But and and just seem like he had all them vehicles, and he struggles just to keep one going. Oh, uh, I. I and that's his livelihood, scrapping. I am, there is no way that I would try to scrap as a livelihood if I was younger. No way, not, unless the prices were a lot higher. I don't see how people make it scrapping. 
and I take issue with some of the channels, some of the scrappers, uh, they give the impression that, man, that you ought to get into this business, it, it, it's just scrap out there. Yeah, there's scrap out there, but you're not getting anything for it much now, you know, and it, it's almost like they're implying you can, you can make a living at it. And, and, my opinion about scrapping as a livelihood, you need to do it on a bigger scale. You need to do it like on a commercial scale. Uh, and there's a few on there that do, that makes a lot of money. That They go to scrapyard and they come back with $800 or $1,000. In some cases, I've seen one come back with $1,800 for a load. And that's because they got the equipment, they got the trucks, our truck, our trucks, and and they, it's a business and they go about it the right way. But to get out there with a little pickup truck, the ones that's got the little small trucks and scrapping, uh, they don't get much of scrap, but they're making good money because they got thousands of subscribers and they're getting a check from uh, YouTube once a month. So that's, that's their money. Their money ain't coming from that scrapping. Uh, and there's lots of people say they're scrappers, but they're not scrappers. They're, they go after stuff like makeup, stuff like that. I see a lot of those sounds. They got a lot of subscribers, but they're not scrappers. They're dumpster divers, but they ain't looking for steel and stuff like that. Uh, uh, crazy Family Tube, uh, they, they score a lot of stuff that they donate and resell and stuff like that. And right off the top of my head, I can't recall if they do scrap metal or ever or not. They might. I can't recall. I'll have to go back and look on it. That's my senior. That's my senior man. And me being their grandpa, I ought to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the grandpa. And I ain't got my hat yet. And it's Tuesday. Y'all found my hat and I ain't got it yet. I guess it'll be here. <laughs> uh, I ain't gonna mess that hat up either with mounting a camera on it and all that stuff. I'll just, I'll wear it. And the only time I'm gonna wear my hat with a camera on it's when I'm videoing or something. Um, but yeah, I'd like to be on everybody's YouTube and, and, and be able to have some video chats with you. Uh, that, to me, boy, that'd just be great. That would be a big part of my day. Uh, and also something else that back in the days, back when I was a kid, you know, in the fifties, uh, it was it was late it was late forties. It well, it was in the forties and early fifties that businesses closed on Sunday. And that was for a long time like that. But also, businesses closed on Wednesday for a at 12 o'clock, they closed. They it was closed for half a day. And the reason for that was everybody had to have, didn't have to have, but should have a garden. And they call it victory gardens. And this was during World War II when stuff was short and everything and people had gardens, victory gardens, and that half day on Wednesday when you was off, that was supposed to be spent working on your garden. Uh, my dad had one, always, always had one. Even when we lived in Broad Creek Village in Norfolk, Virginia, he had a garden out there, and he worked in it on Wednesdays. And uh, uh, he also, 
he built these little rabbit traps pretty simple deal and he set them out in the woods and baited them with a piece of apple in there and that rabbit would go in that box in that hole to get that piece of apple or to eat that apple and they'd start nibbling on it and they'd trip a stick and it, the door would fall down and they was trapped. So I don't recall him uh, butchering, you know, killing the rabbit and butchering and all that, but I know we had rabbit to eat. But I, I, I'm glad he didn't show me that part of it because uh, I'm really squeamish about that. Um, if I was, if it was up to me for all the animals, the cows and uh, goats and chickens, if it was up to me to see that they got killed and butchered, uh, the world would be a, a, be a vegetarian because I, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. <laughs> That's just me. I raised some rabbits one time, <laughs> but I could come time to butcher them things. <laughs> I had to. I couldn't do it. I I I pick them up. I hold them up by their hind legs, and I had a stick that you hit them in the back of the head, and it breaks your neck and kills them. And I may have told this before. I don't know, but. I, I got the first one and I held him up and I aimed my stick and I went Pip. and the rabbit squealed and of course I didn't hit him hard I was trying to for better for lack of a better word I was trying to kill that rabbit gently and you don't gently kill anything <laughs> It's not a gentle deal. And I couldn't do it. And that rabbit squealed and that was it. My butchering was over for that day. I never got it done. And I called this man that got me started in that. And eating rabbit. But it wasn't rabbits I raised and killed. It was rabbits we bought. And that man come over there. And when he got there, I went in the house. I didn't sit out there and watch him, and he butchered, I think I had about 20 rabbits. And they were New Zealand's, a good meat rabbit. He butchered them out and everything, cut them all up. And when he gave them to me, they, were, they weren't fuzzy little cute things. It was meat, kind of looked like chicken. But I didn't raise no more rabbits. I did raise Angoras one time to, um, uh, to uh, raise to get the Angora wool off of them. And that didn't last long because them suckers was hard. Very hard to take care of. Man, you had to brush them things every day. They, I don't know if you ever seen an Angora rabbit, but look it up. They're beautiful rabbits, beautiful fur, and I got out of that. But I, mine were all white. They, they got black angoras, but mine were all white. But anyway, back to the Victory Gardens. That's why they closed a half day on Wednesday. And that was just... That was it, you know, everybody closed. If you want anything, you better get it before 12 o'clock. Oh, uh, I, um, I can remember lots of times I, I'd go get something across the railroad tracks at the store if I had a nickel. And I'd get me a Three Musketeer candy bar. <laughs> Wednesday, they were closed. Oh. Uh, that, that that don't happen no more. Now, of course, nobody's got anything like a victory garden. But back there in the war, people had to tighten up their belts and take care of business. Uh, 
And there was, there's a lot of things you couldn't buy unless you had a ration stamp. You could get ration stamps once a month from some government office there and, and rations, there was ration stamps for gas, there was ration stamps for shoes, there was ration stamps for coffee, ration stamps for sugar, and I'm sure there's some other stuff uh, that there were ration stamps for. Uh, <laughs> one time, <laughs> <laughs> One time, I, I must have been about six or five or six. Mama had her stamps laying up there, and I didn't know what they were for. And they're in a little, like a little postage stamp book, you know, and I was looking at them, and I started, they were perforated, and I was pulling them off and just sticking them around and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> boy she she seen that and she started she was hysterical and I don't know if she ever found them all or not uh, <laughs> I know she tore my butt <laughs> she tore my daddy never spanked me mama did all the spanking good lord she tore my butt up for that but one thing for sure I knew not to touch them stamps anymore. But there was a lot of things like that back there. And I can't remember. I can remember the last part of the war. I'm talking about World War II. And I remember for a couple of years after that, things were still rationed, you know, because of their, all the shortages and everything. But I wish I could didn't remember stuff about the war, but I can't because, you know, I, when the war, the last part of the war, I was like four or five years old. Good grief. Anyway, that's my stories today. And I'm sticking to it. I'm taking it easy. I may get out here and do some stuff. I got stuff I want to take apart. Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It was a song like that, wasn't it? Oh, well. GoPro, stop recording.